Hello, and welcome to Chocolate Baby Storytime. I'm Tally Hamilton, and we are located at the Marjorie Luke Theater on the east side of Santa Barbara. We are here to celebrate Black History Month and to read books centering black voices. It's time to celebrate black identities, love, joy, and families. But before we start, we have a special song and dance just for you. So let's get up on our feet and get out our wiggles. What's up, everybody? My name is Miss Alexis. It is so nice to see you. You guys look amazing. Welcome to story time. I am here to get you ready, get those jitters out. So I want you to stand up. Come on, stand up. And I want you to dance to the song because I know you know it. I also want you to sing to the song. Give me your best vocals. Give me your best dance moves. I want to see it all, OK? Let's do it. Hey. There's a party going on right here, a celebration. Wasn't that a great performance? Now, let's dive into our first book. Let's get comfortable. My name's Bicola Ishola, and I've lived in Santa Barbara for almost 15 years. I am a health insurance broker in town, and I enjoy reading books, and I enjoy reading books to kids. Hair Love by Matthew A. Cherry. My name is Zuri, and I have hair that has a mind of its own. It kinks coils and curls every which way. Daddy tells me it's beautiful. That makes me proud. I love that my hair lets me be me. In funky braids with beads, I'm a princess. And when my hair is in two puffs, I'm above the clouds like a superhero. My hair even does magic tricks. One day Rocky and I were playing outside when along came the rain. From large to small it went, presto, just like that. There's nothing my hair won't do. Today I woke up early all by myself. I was too excited to sleep. It's a big day. Daddy was still sleeping. Shh, I said to Rocky as we tiptoed past him. Lately Daddy has been worn out. He makes me breakfast takes me to school, goes to work, picks me up, and yesterday he went for a bike ride around the park. I think he needs a break. Because today is special, I want a perfect hairstyle. This calls for a professional's touch. 
paws off Rocky. Daddy heard the crash. Zuri, what on earth? He asked. I was only trying to help, I said. Daddy smiled. Can I help too? It'll be a piece of cake, Zuzu. The first style was a big no way. The second was no better, no daddy. Then daddy tried slicking my hair back into two puffs. Ouch, daddy yelled. Wait a minute, daddy said as he reached into the drawer and pulled out a pick. Ta-da! <laughs> daddy, really, I said. I'll be right back, he promised. Now, how's that, he asked, pulling a hat over my eyes. Daddy, come on, we can do better than that. I really need my hair to be special. Don't worry, he said, we'll figure this out. Then I had a great idea. Daddy gathered all the tools we needed and we were set. Watching carefully, Daddy combed, parted, oiled, and twisted. He nailed it. Funky puff buns. Pretty pretty and so much fun. Rocky approved too. I put on my superhero cape as the final touch to a perfect look. Where's my Zuzu? Mommy called from the door. She could not get in the house fast enough. Mommy! You've got to be the prettiest Supergirl I've ever seen, she said. And your hair is beautiful, Zuri. Who did it? I looked at Daddy and beamed. Mommy smiled, very nice. Thank you, we learn from the best, Daddy said as he gave her a big hug. My hair is Mommy, Daddy, and me. It's hair love. The reason why I like hair love is I'm a, a black woman who's at times felt a little insecure about having my hair in a more natural state. And recently I just said, you know what? I wanna put my hair up in braids. I wanna put my hair up in twists. And so this, this book really means a lot to me and it really resonates a lot with me because just like Zuri in the book, I just want a pretty hairstyle to make me feel pretty too. Thank you, Bucola. I learned to love my hair and you should learn to love yours too. Now let's invite our next reader. Hello everyone. My name is Wendy Sims Moten. I am the executive director for First Five Santa Barbara County. We focus on children zero to five and focus on reading. And I'm also a member of the Santa Barbara Unified School District Board. I'll be reading a wonderful book entitled Su Wei by Lupita Nyong'o. Yes, I'm so excited. Su Wei was born the color of midnight. She looked nothing like her family, not even a little, not even at all. Mama was the color of dawn. Hardly anyone at school looked like Su Wei either. People gave her sister, Mitch, pet names like Sunshine and Ray and Beauty. Baba, the color of dusk. And Mitch, her sister, was the color of high noon. People gave Su Wei names like Blackie, Darkie, and Night. Su Wei felt hurt every time. So she hid away while her sisters made a lot of friends. Su Wei dreamed of being the same color as her sister. She wanted real friends too. She got the biggest razor she could find and tried to rub off a layer or two of her darkness. That hurt. She crept into Mama's room and helped herself to her makeup. Oh no, she would hear about this from Mama. Su Wei decided to work from the inside out and ate only the lightest, brightest foods. With a stomach ache, she went to bed early and turned to God for a miracle. Dear Lord, why do I look like midnight when my mother looks like dawn? Please make me as fair as the parents I'm from. I want to be beautiful 
not just to pretend. I want to have daylight and I want to have friends. If you hear me, my Lord, and would like to comply, may I wake up as bright as the sun in the sky. Amen. When Mama came in to wake her for the school the next morning, Sulwe rose to find not a trace of daylight in her midnight skin. Sulwe told Mama everything. Mama asked, what is your name? Sulwe, he muttered. And what does it mean? Star, Sulwe whispered. Brightness is not in your skin, my love. Brightness is just who you are. As for the beauty, Mama said, rubbing Sulwe's stomach the way she always did to comfort her. You are beautiful. Sulwe sighed. Well, you're the beautiful to me, but you can't rely on what you look like to make you feel beautiful, my sweet. Real beauty comes from your mind and your heart. It begins with how you see yourself, not how others see you. Now up you get and out you go. How could she, as dark as she was, have brightness in her? How could she have beauty when no one but her mother seemed to see it? How could she be a star? That night, a shooting star appeared at Solway's window. The night sent me, the star said, come with me. Solway hopped onto the star and off they went. Long ago, at the beginning of time, said the star, there was night and day. They were sisters. They loved each other very much, but people didn't treat the sisters the same. People gave day pet names like lovely, nice, and pretty. People gave night names like scary and bad and ugly. She felt hurt every time. Well, night got fed up and walked right off the earth. Day stayed behind and enjoyed making everybody happy in the sun. But then Day grew too long. Day began to really miss her sister. So did everybody else. There had to be a way to get her back. Day set off to find night. And she did. I miss you, said Day. I miss you too, said Night but you don't know what it's like to be treated badly for being dark. You're right, I don't, Day replied. But what I do know is that we need you just the way you are. Come and see. Night returned and the people rejoiced. We need the darkest night to get the deepest rest. We need you so that we can grow and dream and keep our secrets to ourselves. The stars chimed in. Brightness isn't just for daylight. Light comes in all colors, and some light can only be seen in the dark. While day had a golden glow, with night everything had a silver sheen, elegant and fine. Day told her sister, when you are the darkest is when you are most beautiful. It's when you are most you. Could it be that night did not need to change? Not even a little, not even at all. Now that night and day were back together, a little bit of night returned to day in the form of shadows, and a little bit of day returned to night in the form of moonlight. They were inseparable from that moment on and promised to celebrate the brightness in each other, whether people chose to see it or not. You see, the star explained, we need them both on their sunniest day and their darkest night and every shade in between. Together they make the world we know, light and dark, strong and beautiful. Suwe rose that next morning beaming. There would be no hiding anymore. She belonged out in the world, dark and beautiful, bright and strong.
And if she ever need a reminder of her brightness, she could look up at the sky on the darkest night to see for herself. So we felt beautiful inside and out. The end. I chose this book because we need to all remember ourselves, how beautiful we are inside and out and how strong we are. We often look for others to tell us that and we can't find that. But So Wei found that in herself. She found that she was strong and beautiful and so she was beaming. And we need to make sure that we are strong and beautiful and we need to shine our light wherever it is. I really enjoyed this book and we'll probably read it again. Hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for Chocolate Baby Storytime. Please join us next week for a couple more reads.